We are here at Gary Fraser Island, the world's largest sand island located just off the coast of southeast Queensland. It's 120 k's of pure paradise and the perfect location to hone your off-roading skills or start from scratch if you've never driven off the beaten track before. There's only a small section of paved road just as you come off the ferry. The rest is all sand. So a four-wheel drive vehicle with low range is an absolute must, which is why we're driving the hugely capable Mazda VT50. Here's how you can do ute at Gary Island. Thorough preparation is key for any type of four-wheel driving. You should plan well in advance of your trip by securing some basic four-wheel drive recovery gear, including a tyre pressure gauge, portable air compressor, definitely some traction mats, and of course, a trusty old shovel. It can't hurt to include a snatch strap, some shackles, and of course, a rope dampener as well. When driving on sand, it's necessary to lower your tyre pressures. This is also an important step to consider with any dedicated off-road driving, regardless of your terrain. The factory fitted tyres on the Mazda BT50 are more than up to the job. Typically, they'd be inflated to 33 psi for driving on bitumen, but for tackling Gari, we'd highly recommend lowering the tyre pressure to between 18 and 24 psi. One thing to bear in mind is that by lowering your tyre pressure, you are also reducing your ride height and clearance, so it's important to try and find the right balance. Once you've adjusted your tyre pressures, it's time to get familiar with the specific four-wheel drive modes. All Mazda BT50s equipped with four-wheel drive have this really handy guide on the driver's sun visor. It's quick and easy to refer to, especially if you need a refresher. If you're driving to the beach to see the SS Mahino shipwreck, do some fishing, or find the perfect camping pitch, then four high is fine for the hard sand as it allows you to drive at faster speeds, but still gives you the reassurance of four driven wheels. Keep in mind that it's 30 kilometers an hour speed limit on inland tracks and 80 kilometers an hour speed limit on the beach, unless otherwise signposted. You'll need to change into four low when the sand gets deep, dry and soft. You're likely to encounter this as you head further inland on the high traffic areas such as beach access tracks and popular car parks. Keep to the tracks that have already been created by previous vehicles. This will help the vehicle to find its natural path. It's really important that you avoid sharp turns and sudden braking too. Take it slow and steady without over revving the engine. That way you'll minimise wheel spin. Momentum is critical and maintaining that momentum with smooth and steady inputs is the key. Let the vehicle do the work for you. Use the torque that's available and try to maintain a consistent speed that matches the surface. You really want to focus on your throttle control as much as your steering angles. In fact, Turning the wheel too much can actually be detrimental or even dangerous as it could cause you to get bogged or even tip over if a sandbank falls away underneath you. If you do get stuck, don't panic. We are going to show you how to get out of it. We've intentionally got the rear axle bogged for the purpose of this demonstration. As soon as you know you are stuck, stop. Do not continue to power out of the sand, you'll only continue to dig deeper. Dig out the sand from behind the wheels using your hands, a spade or by using the end of your traction mats. You want to dig deep enough that you can position the traction mats underneath the tyres as far as you possibly can. Once you're in position, clear any bystanders from the area. Put your seatbelt on, turn the engine on, make sure it's in low range four wheel drive. Select drive and gently accelerate. If that hasn't worked, you're still bogged and you have the benefit of being accompanied by another vehicle, now is the time to hook up the snatch strap. You must always attach the strap with the D-shackle to the specified recovery points on the front and rear of both vehicles. Once you've checked your equipment and you're ready to go, ensure that both vehicles are in low range. 
But the most important part of a successful and safe vehicle recovery is good communication. Once you see the slack being taken up in the strap, the stranded vehicle needs to accelerate just before full tension is engaged to aid the recovery. Now that you're out of the sand, you might encounter a water crossing, just like the one here at Eli Creek. It's a stunning spot, but don't let the clear water fool you. Always check the depth before you attempt it. Speaking of depth, our vehicle is fitted with a Mazda Genuine Accessories Snorkel. This is a great addition for any four-wheel drive, especially when you're driving on sand or in dusty desert conditions, as it lets your vehicle breathe the cleanest air available and prolongs the life of your air filter. However, do not automatically assume that a snorkel increases your vehicle's weighting depth. You should always check the specific manufacturer rating before entering any water. The key to tackling any water crossing is to approach with steady momentum and maintaining that momentum all the way through. This helps to create a bow wave in front of you, essentially pushing the water away from the vulnerable parts of the vehicle. Too fast and you'll start kicking up water and risking damage. So it can help to have the vehicle in low range and in manual mode using first or second gear and no more than a maximum speed of up to 15 kilometers per hour. Whatever you do, do not stop midway through the crossing or you could get stuck. Your vehicle may take on water and you could end up with catastrophic engine damage. There's one more step left and it's one of the most important, thoroughly washing your vehicle to remove any sand and corrosive salt water deposits. There are a couple of dedicated automatic car washers located here on Gari. If you don't have access to these for whatever reason, then plan to jet wash the vehicle as soon as you're back on the mainland. As you can see, there is plenty to consider. But by following these tips, you'll be able to maximize your time on the island and take in everything this wonderful place has to offer.